Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the textbooks I have here that I've purchased this year. This is not all of them. Um, I have actually lost one. <sighs> Anyways, it kills me. Whole other story, but let's dive on in here real quick. All right, now the textbook that I lost, I read half of this book. Life has been crazy chaotic for me lately. Um, I put it down somewhere in my house. I have kids, they've moved the book. I don't know, it's around somewhere. It might be in a travel bag, in a suitcase. Um, moved into a different bookshelf in a different room. Uh, it's called uh, Democracy in Deficit, uh, The Political Legend of Lord Keynes. Uh, it's by James Buchanan. Anyways, really interesting book. Goes through fiscal responsibility, going through budgeting, going through economics, was viewed and perceived and understood um, pre-Keynesian economics, like pre-30s, and talking about how you have the integration of Keynes into economics, and then you have Keynesian economics. Well, that's fine, and I have that book, and I'm reading it, and I really enjoyed that book. I also went and purchased um, Keynes's The General Theory of Employment, Interest, and Money, which is his actual book. Now, the reason I purchased these two books is because I love economics. Like, deep down, I'm an economist in training. I have a minor in economics for my undergrad. I have a master's in applied economics for graduate school. Uh, I really like economics from a math and theory perspective, not from a touchy-feely I don't know, political science -y perspective. Um, but I've been trained in Keynesian economics because I've been to modern economic schools, right? That's what my education has been in. Um, but that being said, I'm like, I've never sat down and read his book. So I want to read his book and get the words from his own writing, right? His own hand, his own mouth and brain here. I do not want like all the teachings because what you realize is sometimes works are written and then people are extremists or people just take ideas and run with them and they become very different. Now, I'm strongly against socialism. I'm strongly against the Keynesian economic methodology, consumption, consumption, consumption. Um, but again, it doesn't hurt to read different perspectives and think about them and challenge them and have different ideas. So you'll see a common thread here is trying to expand your horizons and think a little bit differently. Um, so these books are the ones, purchased the other book. Uh, this one I have not had time to read yet. Now, a gift that I received, and I will love to do a book review on this book as well. Um, this is going to be Problems and Solutions in Stochastic Calculus with Applications. Um, it's by uh, FEMA. Clevin is on there. He's one of the authors. Um, there are two other authors of the or before his name on here, but he wrote the other book I have, which I, I, you know, he sent me the copy for free, the other book, and I read it, and I loved it because it's stochastic calculus um, for finding, it's, well, it's stochastic calculus, that, it's just that, uh, and then it's applied to finance into biology at the end of it. I oddly enough find biology makes more sense to me. It's quicker, it's easier, I don't know, it just, it makes more sense. Finance is a little bit more weird and nuanced. It's not as hard science-y, so there's a lot of, you know, challenges with that. That book, though, the intentions of that book was supposed to be to teach uh, stochastic calculus and then have some examples. Now, this is problems and solutions. This book is supposed to team up and go with the other book and be more applications. It ties directly into the structure of the other book. Um, and it has, again, some, uh, what's it called? Some problems and solutions. You can kind of see to work how these, how these problems get worked out. You can kind of see how problems get set up. Uh, I'm really excited. I started reading this book. I think I got like a chapter or two in and then... Yeah, life happens. So that derailed me. But this is one of the books I have not purchased or I have not read for the year. Um, the next two books I'm going to put in here are going to be books by George Box. So if you don't know who George Box is, um, George Box is my absolute favorite economist. Uh, he has just had a, lot, a huge impact in the stats community. Um, Box Jenkins Method. So this book is by Box and Jenkins. It is time series forecasting and control. Um, I needed an excuse to buy this book. A lot of George Box's books are actually fairly expensive. A lot of them are a little bit older as well. This is being used by one of the grad programs. So I use this as a great excuse and time to buy this book. Now, again, I did review the book, went through the chapters, the structures, Try to read different parts and sections to figure out the depth and the rigor for program reviews, but I have not had time to really like crack this book open and read it. And for perspective, I've built almost an entire career, at least in the beginning of my career, off the box Jenkins methods of doing like ARIMA modeling. So this book, like I'm just dying to read it and I just haven't had time to read that. And then I'm online purchasing books and you know, well, I like George Box. Uh, and so then I saw this one for statistics for experimenters. Um, I, it's, it's got a tear in the back of the wrapper, but it's still shrink wrapped. Like this book is in mint condition. Uh, anyways, I really want to open this book and read it, but I'm not going to yet because my shop gets a little bit humid in here. Um, when I don't have my air conditioners back here running, uh, 
But this is an introduction to design, data analysis, and model building. Why would I purchase this book? Why do I want to build this besides the fact of liking George Box? Um, how many times can I say his name? A million times. But that being said, why did I purchase this? Experimental design is often thought as an academic pursuit. It is not. Uh, when you do financial analysis, you do model development, you have to look at flaws in your data and the structuring around that. Now, again, when you're designing a research project, of course, you can screw the whole thing up uh, because you have no idea what you're doing half the time. You're trying to figure out all these pieces. Experimental design, which that book's on, is getting all those pieces put together. Now, when you're on the outside looking in, you have no impact and no control. You have to look at your data and figure out which biases are already in that data. So I purchased that book because I really want to dig down that rabbit hole and get into topics that I probably just haven't thought about. And I'll note here too, because I've, I've been on this cheap book spree lately. Uh, there's this thing called Half Price Books in Texas. I picked up the Keynes book for $6.99. Sometimes I get a, like a stellar deal, um, but often I find books that you just can't buy on Amazon, which I'll cover here. Uh, I waltzed into this Half Price book, which is literally across the street from my office. And so like I take a <laughs> half an hour lunch break and I run over there and I look for just math books. Uh, and there were two books that caught my eye, which I have not had time to read. Um, they have Romanian geometry. Um, so I'll put this book up here if you're interested. Uh, anyways, it's a, it's a, it's by Springer, but it's an older publication. Uh, again, it has, I believe uh, Chinese on the front. And then it also has, I think Portuguese. Uh, anyways, this book is just like an older book on Romanian geometry. I am quite excited. So no worries. It's, it's English on the inside. Uh, but it's just a topic that I think is interesting. Like there are all these math topics I want to learn. I want to read. I want to look at the different perspectives. Like I want to dive into the theory so I can really get the intuition behind a lot of the, the methods and, and math and how to solve different problems. So that's been a book that's on my list. Uh, again, I picked this up for $9.99. Um, this is going to be Measurement and Analysis of Random Data by Dependent and Pearsall. Um, again, this is a Wiley book. It is an older book. Again, it's not super thick, so it's right up my alley, something I could probably pick up and really get going through. Um, again, another interesting just kind of math concept, measurement and analysis. I've talked a little bit about on the channel, the importance of understanding like, you know, very theoretical math uh, and looking at things from a practical viewpoint. I'm excited for this book. I tend to like older books too because I like to see how the math was taught when it was originally developed. Um, I find often when you get modern textbooks, it's like an academic professor who wants to make money by selling textbooks. And so they go out and they take a bunch of other textbooks and they just write another textbook out of those textbooks. And often a lot of the insight and kind of drawing of conclusions that come from really learning these things from the ground up get lost when you get into modern textbooks. So I'm always buying textbooks because I like to look at things from different perspectives uh, and see if I can find out, you know, something different, some sort of nuanced detail that I've missed in other textbooks or education or the industry or whatnot. And then this book was $10.99. It is going to be Statistical Computing with R. It is by Maria Rizzo. Uh, again, this has been on my radar because I found it at the bookstore. Um, and like I'm in chapter five right now going through it. There's Monte Carlo integration. Um, anyways, I found this book was actually pretty simple. I think it came more of like an undergraduate level, great introduction. Um, and I've been like, ah, I want to read this and do some book reviews on it. And I just haven't had the time. Um, but this book, I think it's just going to be interesting and fun. Again, just covering different topics, um, different things I've already learned but hopefully coming at it from a different viewpoint. Um, again, I have dabbled in R. I worked in R in grad school, but I haven't had a lot of career, you know, experience of actually being able to use R. So me diving back into these, uh, it's going to be some fun here. And then finally, I'm going to show you guys something because a lot of you don't realize this. So John C. Hull has the derivatives book. There's a big version and a baby version. Um, there's also a big version and a baby version of Bodie, Kane, and Marcus. They have this Essentials of Investing, which I used in my undergrad. This is like the baby version. So it's a, you know, it's a decently thick book. It's not crazy huge. Um, but this is like good undergrad introductory investment information decisions. Now I've read this book. I've gone through this in school. Um, anyways, there's also a bigger version, which is going to be not the Essentials, but it's just going to be called Investments by Bodie, Kane, and Marcus. This is the eighth edition. I don't see the price tag on here. I'm sure I just whipped it off, like scratched off the, the, the price tag. I think I paid like $10, $20 or something for this book. 
again, at the bookstore, just waltzed in there, went through the finance section. They had this book and I've reviewed PDF versions of this for grad school programs. And I, I'm like, you know what? It's time to get the real book. Like just get the real book. It's cheap. It's at the bookstore. Um, again, this is just going to be traditional finance investments, traditional finance. Um, I don't often read traditional finance, but when I do, I try to find books that are quite popular, well acclaimed books that I'm not going to waste a lot of time uh, reading. They also help me get into just, again, looking at those basics, guys. So one of those things I want to tell you is like having a book is like really, it's like building a relationship, right? There are I've had a lot of books, right? Uh, I went out and I've read a lot of books, but there are always some core books I just tend to go back to. Uh, the books that I tend to go back to reference things for work, like I'm looking something up, um, there's like a statistical test or there's like, I'm like, oh, you know, I did some smoothing and it was this model and I can't remember the process here uh, and I'm trying to figure it out and I'm like, you know, on my computer Googling and I can't figure it out. I'm like, you know, I know exactly what class that came from. And so I go back to those long-term relationships with these books here. Um, the Christmas Quant Challenge that I challenge you guys to do, go read a paper, uh, go read a chapter in a book, something. That is me trying to get you guys to have a fling with a book here, right? I want you guys to go find something new, something exciting. Um, really get into this. And so kind of the takeaway for this video here is you don't need all these books. You really don't. Um, but I would encourage you guys just to get like a textbook or two, pick up something for the year, you know, uh, especially in your grad school, it's tough. You already have a bunch of books going, so I wouldn't worry about it. But if you're getting into, you're either younger so if you're going to be like high school age, pick something up and just kind of peruse it. You don't need to learn it. You don't need to know everything. Just pick the book up. Uh, you will start to build long-term relationships with some of these textbooks and there'll be like these core pieces of knowledge that you can really get back to. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.